I'm Brian Robert Oliver, and this is the Infinite Eleven's Anatomy of Horror. Tonight, we're going to talk about The Witch, written and directed by Robert Eggers. It's coming up next. New England, 16th century. A proud, righteous man takes his family and breaks away from the puritanical plantation from which they live to find a better place for he and his clan to worship God. They find a beautiful clearing bordering a vast forest to call home. Though the family is blessed with good fortune in the beginning, they soon suffer a great tragedy, for within the forest resides a witch, and soon misfortunes begin to pile up for the family, pushing their faith to the breaking point. Now, it happens every once in a while, but it's really rare to have a film this well made, this masterful to be made by a first-time director. Like Julia Ducournau in her film Raw, The Witch is an impeccable film made with the skill of a seasoned artist in his prime, and that artist is Robert Eggers. Now, like David Fincher, Eggers comes from a background in production design, and it really shows. Every shot is so well thought out, from its angle to its blocking, its lighting, acting, sound, and of course, its design. And Eggers' film makes me think of the word verisimilitude, which has to do with how real something feels. The Witch, as well as his other film, The Lighthouse, feel incredibly real, incredibly authentic, and that is imperative for a film like The Witch. This movie feels like we are watching a real puritanical family in the 16th century, and the performances in The Witch are nothing short of phenomenal. The major standouts are Ralph Einson, who plays the patriarch, William, Kate Dickey, who plays the mother, Catherine, and Harvey Scrimshaw, who plays young Caleb, the eldest son. But truly, the entire cast shines, and the dialogue they work with is extremely haunting and extremely authentic. I do want to mention really quick, though, that there have been other popular analysis done on this film due to its rich themes and carefully written script, most notably from Rant and Bollocks and Ryan Hollinger. Both did an amazing job at analyzing this film, so I put the links to their work in the description below. Of course, this analysis is nowhere near a complete analysis and focuses mainly on the filmmaking aspect. Now, there are a ton of themes in The Witch. You've got patriarchy, sin, original sin, shame, femininity, desire, guilt, which is a major one, but also self-deprivation, sacrifice, jealousy, among many, many more. So I feel it was a very conscious decision by Eggers to make a film during this particular period. And that's because it deals with the foundational beliefs of Western culture and beliefs that form the values that so many still hold as gospel, both literally and figuratively. This film is about a family of Puritans. Now, the Puritans left England to the New World because they were at odds with the Catholic Church. The Puritans believed that the Catholic Church was not preaching the gospel according to the Bible. The Catholics felt that the Puritans were too extreme, so as to not lose control over England pretty much gave the Puritans the boot. Now, the patriarch of this family, William, felt that the Puritans themselves were not preaching the gospel according to the Bible, so he took leave of them. Think about that. But through this family, we see the values and beliefs of Christianity held up to the light. The belief that we are born of sin and inherently sinful beings. And we watch this family a good family, they are good people, tear at each other because of the shame attached to their own hypocrisies, which in turn shines a light on the hypocrisies of our own culture. Now let's talk about the heavy symbolism in the film, specifically the ones that reinforce themes of patriarchy, femininity, and sin. In Christianity, man is made in the image of God, and there is no one man more godlike than his son, Jesus Christ. The witch goes to great lengths to show you who William represents, like this, and this, and definitely this. Eggers uses a lot of animals in his film to symbolize fear, and a great example is the rabbit, like right here. This is a great scene because here we have the physical representation of Jesus, and then we have a rabbit, an ancient pagan representation of the feminine and abundance. These two representations have something in common, spring. In Christianity, Jesus rises from the dead on what is known as Easter Sunday. In many pagan religions, it was the rabbit that brought forth the spring equinox to guide the land out of its winter slumber and into fertility. So what's the connection? You might know him or her as the Easter bunny. So when we see the rabbit, we know it's an omen for this family, a bad omen, because it's a representation of an animal with godless roots or Western godless roots. And finally, original sin. 
It was Eve, the first woman who bites into the apple in the Garden of Eden, angering God and therefore making everyone guilty of original sin. So we have this. So I could go on and on and fill an entire episode on symbolism in this film, and others have done that, so I won't. What I will do is show you the very first scene of this film, and that's how good this movie is, is that I could stop almost anywhere in its runtime and find for you something profound. But there is no better place to start than the first scene. Real quick, there is an article on our site, the811.net, that goes deeper into this breakdown. So check that out if you're interested. I've left a link in the description below. The visuals in this scene are chock full of information, thanks to the genius of both Robert Eggers and director of photography, Jaron Blasky. So the two eldest children we see here, Thomas and Caleb, notice the fear in their eyes and notice how their eyes are lifted up. What's also interesting is we see a very similar shot, almost identical to this later in the film, when we witness Thomason praying, her eyes lifted to God, much like how they are right now. But it's a pattern, and we watch William's four children stare up mostly in frightened judgment, and we hear William's spiteful words against these men, and then we break the pattern here. Similar shot, but it's the back of William's head, and what do we notice? We have yet to see his face, but we already know he looks like Jesus. The color of the hair, the top lighting that resembles a halo. It's amazing. But what are we being told? To reinforce William's dialogue, we know that he has turned his back on these men, these false prophets, as he calls them. He will not look up to them. They are not worthy. Therefore, unlike his children, he has his back to the camera. And then we go into a wider shot here, and it's a beauty. Right away, what do we see? William says he cannot be judged by these men and notice that he stands higher in the frame than the judge in the middle of the frame. Even better, what are the only two things above William? Two windows that might as well be the eyes of God. After all, that is what William is saying, yes? That he can only be judged by God? And I love this. Two incredibly flat shots and so stiff. Much like the rigid laws of this place and also very similar to the pattern established with William and Kate's children at the beginning of the sequence. Now we get a better look at the little judge and look at how small he is in the frame. Also the lighting. The men are shrouded in black and the women stand in the light. Is Agris telling us something here that men are hiding something or maybe that they're evil? The family all stand behind the father here. It's a direct reference to patriarchy. And this shot. Is it me or does this resemble Da Vinci's The Last Supper? Something that Ryan Hollinger also picked up on. And if that was what was intended, then think about the Last Supper. What happens in it and where on Jesus' timeline does it take place? So there you have it. The Witch stars Anya Taylor-Joy, Ralph Einson, Kate Dickey, and Harvey Scrimshaw. Until next time.